Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric system. As far as I know, we haven't done trigonometric systems before, so this is very exciting. Let's get started. We have 2 sine x plus 3 cosine y is equal to 3 and 3 sine y plus 2 cosine x is equal to 4. And we're going to be looking for x and y values. Now, there's a lot of different things you can do with systems, but especially for uh, trigonometric systems, we have different options because of the identities that occur. One of the most important identities in trigonometry, in my opinion, is the Pythagorean identity, which goes as sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is equal to 1. Now, this is very important, and you can easily prove it, uh, you know, using a right triangle or by other means. But let's go ahead and use this to our advantage. Now, for this purpose, since uh, I, ha I do see that, for example, I have here 2 sine x and 2 cosine x, they have the same coefficients, and sine y and cosine y have the same coefficients. To take advantage of the Pythagorean identity, I would like to go ahead and square both sides of each equation, and then see what happens from there. Okay. So once I square the first one, I should be getting something like 4 sine squared x plus 12 sine x cosine y, is equal to, whoops, we forgot the last term, which is 9 cosine squared y, and that should equal 9. And if you square the second one, that should give you 9 sine squared y plus 12 sine y cosine x, right, plus 4 cosine squared x, and that should equal 4 squared, which is 16. Now, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to add these two equations because notice that we have 4 sine squared here and 4 cosine squared here. And obviously, this means 4 times the quantity sine squared x plus cosine squared x, which is equal to 1. So that should give us a uh, 4 there, right? So 4 times 1 is equal to 4. We have 9 sine squared y and 9 cosine squared y. Their sum is going to be 9 for the same reason. And then these two terms basically have the same coefficient. So I can just go ahead and factor out a 12 and see what happens from there. Sine x cosine y plus sine y cosine x. By the way, this should be a cosine x, not a cosine y. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that. This should be a cosine x. Okay. All right, so, and that should give me a sine y cosine x. And then on the right hand side, I do have 9 plus 16, which is equal to 25. Okay, so 4 plus 9 is equal to 13. If I subtract 13 from 25, I get 12. So I'm basically getting 12 times this quantity, sine x cosine y, and I'll tell you what it is in a little bit, plus sine y cosine x is equal to 12. Great. So we can divide both sides by 12, and we end up with a simpler e expression. But now what is that expression equivalent to? Now, you need to know the trigonometric identities, and there's a lot of them. But of course, there are some patterns that you can take advantage of. For example, this one is the sine of x plus y. It's a sum formula that you do definitely need to know. And if you didn't, now hopefully you know, or when you start memorizing, sine of x plus y is equal to that. So that's significant because we're basically uh, taking a sum of products and then turning it into, into something simple, especially like a sig single sign. So that's really nice, uh, very compact, right? So this gives us sine of x plus y is equal to 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean? So let's go ahead and use our unit circle here. So what does it mean for the sine of an angle to be 1? Well, that doesn't always happen, right? That's kind of rare. Well, if you think about the unit circle, a circle whose um, radius is 1, and center at 0, 0, which is the origin, you're basically talking about the following. So I'd like to make, I'd like to make a right triangle here, but any right triangle that I make will have a hypotenuse of one because of the radius of the circle. So when, since we define sine of an angle as opposite over hypotenuse, when the hypotenuse is one, the sine of the angle is just gonna be the opposite side length or the coordinates for this uh, purpose, and it's just going to be the y-coordinate in this case. In other words, what I'm trying to say is on the unit circle, the angle whose sine is 1 
is pi over 2 in terms of radians, right? But we can also write it this way. Well, x plus y is not just pi over 2 because we can also definitely add uh, multiples of 2 pi. So let's just go ahead and, you know, just add 2 pi multiplied by k. So let's just write it as 2k pi. All right, I want to express it in a nicer way. So let's go ahead and do the following. I can just write it as making a common denominator. I can make it pi plus 2k, 2k pi, and I'm going to multiply that by 2. Of course, that's going to be 4k pi divided by 2 like this. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to factor out a pi here so that when I do, I get 4k plus 1, and I'd like to multiply that by pi over 2. So basically, we're talking about multiples of pi over 2 here, and not just any multiple of pi over 2, but odd multiples of pi over 2, but not all the odd multiples. We're kind of skipping. So 4k plus 1 is kind of like a numbers that leave a remainder of 1 when divided by 4, numbers like 1 or 9 or 13 and so on and so forth. So we're only hitting this positive value, because if you just say odd multiples of pi over 2, then you're also talking about 3 pi over 2, which is a negative value. Okay, so those are my x plus y values. Now this is important because if x plus y is, for example, pi over 2, then you can safely say that sine and cosine of x and y are related. What is that supposed to mean? It just means that sine x is equal to cosine y because you're basically talking about two angles that are complementary. And if you draw a right triangle and, you know, label two angles that are complementary, you'll notice that sine of x is going to be the same as cosine of y. And of course, it's also true that sine of y is equal to cosine of x. Now, we're going to use the original equations now, okay? Our original equations were 2 sine x plus 3 cosine y is equal to 3. Now, in this equation, if you go ahead and replace sine x with cosine y, you get 5 cosine y is equal to 3, and that gives you cosine y is equal to 3 fifths. Now, if you do something similar, if you do something similar for the other one, for example, replace sine y with cosine x, right, uh, here, and what was our original equation? Of course, we have to go to that first. So that was 3 sine y, so that was 3 sine y plus 2 cosine x is equal to 4, right? So let me go ahead and, you know, fix this so it looks nicer. So in this equation, we can basically replace sine y with cosine x. So we get 5 cosine x is equal to 4. And that just means that cosine x is equal to 4 fifths. So we got like two different values here. Of course, cosine x is the same as sine y. And cosine y is the same as sine x. So all these values are obviously positive. So we can safely say that from here, tangent x is going to be 3 fourths and tangent y is going to be 4 thirds. So basically, you're talking about two angles here whose tangents are reciprocals. Of course, these angles are complementary. Let's remember that. So we can write our result as follows. So from here, x becomes 10 inverse of 3 fourths, and of course, we can add multiples of 2 pi, so let's just go ahead and add 2 and pi to it. And then y can be written as 10 inverse of 4 thirds, and then we can again multiply or add uh, multiples of 2 pi to it, and let's just write it as 2 l pi, where a, n and l are integers. So for some integers, n and l, this is going to be true, and that's basically going to give us all the solutions to this system. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.